In this video, we use a webhook to start an Azure automation runbook. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seralto. So we previously went over starting runbooks with a schedule and PowerShell. In this video, we review how to start Azure automation jobs with a webhook. Webhooks add flexibility to Azure automation by providing an integration point from outside of Azure. With PowerShell, we had to log into Azure to start the runbook. With a webhook, we can start a runbook from any internet connected system. We can also automate workflows by using them with an enterprise monitoring system or products like ServiceNow to trigger a runbook by a webhook. With webhooks, we can integrate the runbooks into custom applications, a Power App, Logic App, or use an automation service like If This Then That to integrate the runbook into other systems home automation, or a stream deck, for example. Before we go any further, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Become a member for early access to videos, ad-free while private, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD at Udemy.com. The links are below. Back to it. This is a remake of a previous video, and to be honest, not a lot has changed. Well, I've put on a couple pounds, but webhooks and Azure automation work the same. Being such a useful part of Azure Automation, I think it's beneficial to go over webhooks again with some updated information. A webhook is similar to an API. Well, half an API. With APIs, we pass in data with the expectation that the data is processed and new information is passed back to us. APIs work in two directions. A webhook only sends data. A runbook may use the data we pass into the webhook, but it doesn't return any data to us. The only response we get is if the data was received or if there was an error in sending the data. Check out Azure Functions if you're interested in creating APIs. A webhook is a custom URL that's used to send an HTTP POST message to Azure Automation that starts a runbook. One thing to keep in mind, we can't simply pass a webhook URL into a web browser to start a runbook. A web browser is designed to get data from a website. For a webhook to work, it needs to use the HTTP POST method. The POST method is used to send data. The following example uses the PowerShell invoke web request command to start the runbook job. If you want to use a graphical interface, check out Postman. I'll leave more information on Postman below. There's also web browser extensions that can be used to post a URL. A webhook is a URL with a security token that uses the POST method to start a runbook. A webhook consists of a webhook name, the request header, that's a hash table of the incoming post request. It can also have a request body, JSON or XML formatted data passed in and consumed by the runbook. The runbook examples coming up are kept simple for the sake of the demonstration. They use the output stream to display data passed into the runbook. In real life, this data would be consumed by the runbook as part of the automation job. The goal of this exercise is to demonstrate how to pass data into the runbook job with a webhook. Let's go to the Azure Automation portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure Automation account. To begin, let's create a PowerShell runbook in the Azure Automation account and configure the webhook. We'll go to runbooks, create a runbook. We'll give it a name. This one is PowerShell, and we can go with 5.1, and create. Leave it blank for now, but we do need to publish. Go to Add Webhook, or into Webhooks from the Runbook, then create a new webhook. Here we'll go Add Webhook, create a new webhook, enter a name for the webhook, We want to make sure it's enabled and it will expire after a year. You can change the date so it's longer or sooner than a year from now. Just keep in mind that it does expire. Also, as noted on the screen, copy and save the webhook URL before finishing. You won't be able to view that webhook after you click OK. I know it's blurred, but it is there. So we'll copy that. Make sure you save it. We'll need it coming up and then click OK. Leave parameters and run settings as default and click Create. If the Create option isn't active, 
meaning it's grayed out, you may need to open up parameters and run settings. Leave it blank and just click OK. You should have the option then to click Create. Click Create to create the webhook. Next, we need to edit and update the runbook with our code. This code is available at the corresponding blog post. The link is below. Let's edit the runbook. And we'll paste in the code. This is simple code that takes the values passed in from the webhook and then writes that data to the screen to demonstrate how it's interpreted by the runbook. This code gets the input data and assigns it to a webhook data variable. The webhook data is passed in as a PS custom object in PowerShell. So we can parse each element to see the details of what's passed in. This includes the webhook header message, the webhook name, and the webhook request body. Next, we'll save and publish the runbook. Now the runbook's ready to go. Next, we need to build the webhook. Let's go into VS Code for that. The code on the screen assembles the webhook and starts the runbook with a post method. Let's take a look at each line. The URI is the URL of the webhook. That's the URI we got when we created the webhook. Next, we have a hash table formatted header message. We can add whatever we want to to this message. Next, we have the data that we're passing in. We can pass in any data we want but the runbook has to be configured to use that data to be useful. In this example, we're passing in an array of key value pairs. That's the data we're passing in as the body of the webhook. But that data is created as a PowerShell array. We can't pass that inside a web request. It has to be converted to some sort of text to pass it into the runbook over the internet. We use the convert to JSON command to convert the data into JSON. JSON is a text format we can use in the request body. Here we're using the invoke web request method to post the webhook along with the body data to the runbook. This will start the runbook. We're holding the response in a response variable. After that, we're just gonna output the response variable to see the response. Update the information, including the URI value to match your environment. We'll run the code and then let's view the response. We'll scroll up a little bit. We should get a 202 accepted response like you see on the screen. Next, let's go into the Azure portal and view the job summary for the runbook. Here we are in the runbook. Let's go to jobs. We can see one just completed. And let's go into the output. You should get a window similar to what's on the screen if it's successful. The output includes the webhook header passed to the runbook and the name of the webhook. The webhook body shows a JSON payload. This is okay, but it would be better to convert the JSON back to a PowerShell object for use in the PowerShell runbook. Let's go back to the runbook and edit it so we can update the code to convert the JSON to a PS custom object. We'll go into the runbook, overview, and edit. We'll update the code in the runbook. This is the same code that we just run with a couple extra steps to convert the request body back to a PS custom object. The first edition adds a command to convert the request body data back to a PS custom object. Next, we view the data and then we get the data type with the get member command. Next, we loop through the data to write some output. And again, this is just a simple demonstration of how we can use that data that we pass in with a webhook. We'll save and publish the code. Next, let's go back to VS Code. We'll run the same block of code again, passing in the same data and using invoke web request to start the runbook. That looks like it's accepted. Let's go back to the runbook in Azure Automation. We'll go to Jobs. And it looks like the second one completed as well. So we'll open that. And here we have the same output as before. But then we have some new data. The output has a new entry for the full contents of the request body under the full body data. This is the request body converted from JSON. Also, notice that the result from get member shows the JSON message request was converted to a PS custom object. That makes it a little easier to handle in a PowerShell runbook. Finally, we can see the output from the for each loop that process the data we passed in.
That's the basics of using a webhook to pass in data to an Azure Automation Runbook. That is how to use webhooks to pass in data and start a runbook job. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.